All right, can you take us um, take us through your uh, facility here? I'm kind of curious to see what this looks like. Okay. Okay. You can see us? Yep. All right. So this is our front desk. This is our team over here. Right. And Ryan, Ryan and Carto, yeah. And you can oh. see that. And then we're going to go in. And this is our inside of a center. Right. So we have a big space. We got our medical assistant right here. Hey, these are the front frontline workers over here. So this is one of our exam rooms. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can see we got everything in here to examine a patient. Then we'll bring you out to the area where the testing is done by our lead medical assistant right here. Hey, Rose, they're recording you. This is Rose. Hi, Rose. Rose, Rose tell uh, Jeff about how you uh, collect a test. What what happens when people come in? Sure, let's start it. Um... Thank you, Rose. So here's the area we've set up. So I'll just show you. This is a back uh, uh, parking lot that we have. I'll just open this. So if someone's uh, suspected they do the telehealth visit, uh, we'll screen them and then they'll be asked to come into the back parking lot of our center. And then we've set up uh, set up this area in our corridor with all these supplies uh, that we are uh, holding on to. And today's clinic is at from 5 to 8 p.m. So this is today's clinic. I see. Okay. 5 to 8 p.m. So we're trying to limit the amount of hours we do this just for the protection of the pay, uh, yeah. for our employees, but also for the patients to just have a certain time window to come. So right. Rose, go ahead. Tell us how you would do the uh, test. Bring first. Wear gloves. My PPE. So this is part of the PPE. You can see she's got a kit. Can you just show the kit to Jeff? Sure. So these are things that we, we need more of. It's got, what does it have in there, Rose? It has a face shield, N95. So this is what we call an N95 mask. I see. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. In a patient gown, in a PPE gown, and also a socks here. Socks. And a cap. Yeah, so cap and socks. So you can see that the, when the person, when uh, Rose and her team goes out to do this testing, they're really covered covered up. Right, uh, right. And this becomes the rate limiting step as well if we run out of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead, Rose. Okay. And so you say you could really use some gowns as well, correct? I'm sorry, what do you say? We lost you there. Uh, that's okay. You say you can really use some gowns for these tests as well, correct? Yeah, we need gowns, yes. Okay. Go ahead, Rose. So she's going to put this together. And Jude will act like a patient right here. Okay. So we. Thanks, Jude. <laughs> so we keep the patient outside for the most part. Just try to bring him in because it's ventilated outside. We have right. good ventilation in here. We have HEPA filters and all that ro running through here. At the same time, for your for your for your for the patients, we are also seeing regular patients, but we have two separate entrances. So mm -hmm. the COVID patients are coming, uh, suspected are coming to the back entrance and the regular patients, we route them to the front. So they gotcha. don't mingle, basically. I see, I see. So Rose is getting ready. She's putting on her equipment right now. So you have the mask, the cap, the gloves. Yeah. But then the, the whole gown is going to go on. And we also put the patient in a gown as well and a face mask. I don't think people appreciate the fact that you have to have all these supplies and you can only use them once. And after that, they're exactly. Discarded. And that's what we were trying to educate the people as well, because they start getting upset on us. Why, why can't everyone get a test? But part of it is because of a supply issue. So right. if there's people who can donate, we would really appreciate it. Uh, well, like I said, our local dentist just uh, gave us a bunch of masks and uh, gloves. That's going to go a long way. A hundred masks means we can see a hundred more patients. It's nice to know that at times like this, the community is helping out. People are helping out each other. It's, yeah. uh, it's a concerning time for everybody. What, what uh, worries me, and I know a lot of other people, is that we're doing this piecemeal. Oh, here, and here's Michael Coville. He's one of our physician assistants. Hey, Michael. Hello, Michael. How are you doing? How are you today? Great. How are you? Good. Not too bad. We appreciate the, the tour today. I think a lot of people are curious as to exactly what goes on. With yeah, these sure. coronavirus tests. Yeah. And we appreciate Michael. your service uh, getting on the front lines here. Yeah, my pleasure. That's great. So let's see what Rose is doing. Michael, you're doing okay? Oh, yeah. Uh, awesome. Yeah. So All right, Michael. Michael. 
people asking, do you get, are you getting a lot of phone calls about COVID-19? Yeah. How many, how many calls a day, like on the average? Are we getting a day? Uh, today alone, we probably already had over 10. Yesterday, I think we probably fielded over 20 um, and probably swabbed the majority of the... What are the common symptoms? The common symptoms are URI symptoms, so sore throats, uh, muscle aches, low-grade fevers. Uh, as symptoms progress, usually between days like 6 to 10, are symptoms more of pneumonia, so worsening cough. Uh, some shortness of breath, and, things like that. and what are you telling them to, to, to come in and get tested, or it depends on yeah, the person? Yeah, so the, you know, the, some people uh, are coming in to get tested if they feel comfortable coming in. Other people who are just happy with the over the phone call, but for not to be exposing themselves any further, are home quarantining. Uh, and then in some select patients, depending on their symptoms, breath, uh, will do the swab and also have the you know, chest x ray to see if there's any signs that they're developing. Uh, sort of bilateral uh, fundus and the uh, Well, it's it's very concerning, and we certainly appreciate your work and your efforts because uh, you guys are uh, you guys are on the front lines of this, and we appreciate your time. Yeah, glad to help. Stay safe and stay Thanks. healthy. We need yeah, you guys. Thanks. Well. thanks, Mike. And here's uh, how's Rose doing? Like Rose. So, All right, Rose, Rose, how you doing? Done while you were talking to Michael, Rose. So Rose has actually put on two gowns, one underneath the white one you can see uh, right by her gloves. And the second is on top. So we have a double barrier protection over here. All mm -hmm. right, Rose. So now what's going to happen? Oh, she's got an N95 mask and she's going to put a regular mask on as well on top of it mm -hmm. uh, so that we can protect. We, again, it's a double barrier protection. And this mask has a face shield on it. And that's the other part I was saying, eye shields and face shields. Oh, yeah. Are yeah. the other ones that are, that are short in supply. Uh, so you can see that Rose has got this on. Rose, you want to look over here? So this is this is our uh, this is our, uh, our Rose, who's our lead medical assistant, really going out and getting tests on these people. Uh, and then now we'll have wow. Jude come in, so you can have an idea. We'll simulate what needs to get done. Yeah, and here's here's the stuff that she uses, just so people know. We have uh, swabs, uh, and you can see this says oral swabs as well, so we can do in the mouth or the nose. It gets put in a media right here and then sent over to the labs for testing. Okay. There's All a right. lot of little steps that need to go in to keep this safe for everyone. I would imagine it takes a, a while to do just one test. It's not just a simple swab and take take it easy, you know. Yeah. So we'll ask Rose. Rose, how long does it take you to get one patient processed through all these steps? Two minutes. Two minutes to her. But, but beyond that, you do a lot of planning, though, to make yeah. that happen. Yeah, just so to wear all that. So she does a lot of So what these guys do is they set up, our teammate basically sets up everything ahead of time, which takes time. And that's why we're limiting this happening in certain hours so that it gives us time. So if patients come in the call in the morning, then they can come and see the team for the testing in the afternoon. It gives us all this time to set things up. I got uh, you. Because I all of you. this, you, as you can see, to make this happen efficiently, it requires a lot of planning by, by, our, uh, by our star here, Rose, over here. Go ahead, yeah, Rose. Yeah, yeah, protect yourself, yeah. So, she will, so she's saying she's going to take the gloves and the mask to the patient outside. Okay. And the patient over there is going to put that on. We're going to keep the door closed while the patient wow. is putting it on. This is a lot of prep work. And, and hats off to the local and area dentists who are helping you guys out at this time. We can, we can take a lot more help. So far, only one person has donated. Really? I know there's a lot of help around the corner. Uh, so now the patient. So go ahead, uh, Rose. I'll let you narrate. Can you confirm your full name date of birth? Here. And let's see. Okay. Hang in there, Jude. So Rose is going to come here and she's going to collect her stuff. Now, is this going to be a nasal or oral? What are you doing, nasal or oral? Nasal. No, we, we're actually going to just simulate it because we only have limited supply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, want, I don't want you to waste any. Just, no, just, no, just no. Talk it through. That's about it. Absolutely. I have my label, patient label. Can you confirm your name? This is correct. Okay. And you can see the distance that we is being maintained between the patient and the, and the provider. Right. Yeah. So she's going to get a temperature on him first. So we have these infrared temperature stuff that with which we can check the temperature. Okay. Everyone gets a temperature. And then everything's cleaned off 
with antiseptic. That's the other thing, Jeff. We uh, sh short on hand sanitizer and cleaning equipment. So if anyone has CalStat or Lysol, they can drop it off. Even the home stuff works right now. Everything right. works. Lysol, very interesting. You want to donate don't face this way? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got, gotcha. So do you have the patient take the mask off? Yes. Yeah. So so this is this is where the risk becomes, right? We have to have the patient take the mask off. So if you can take so yeah, the nasal is going in the nose. Mm -hmm. And then the mouth one, the patient opens the mouth up and we get a swab in the back, right? But yeah. that's, that's the high risk point of this test, correct? That is it. That, so we have all the prep work done by the team is for that moment. Gotcha. Um, so that because we want to get them in and out. And then what do you do with the patient, Rose? In all set, they can go, they can leave. All done, and we tell them we'll give you a call. Yeah. Start yeah. So, wow. so right now, Rose is saying that the test takes about, we, we're telling patients seven to 10 days for the result to come back. Hopefully with newer tests, this, this number will come down. Uh, I, I, we've heard that there's a shorter test coming back that may happen in 45 minutes, uh, but that hasn't hit the market as yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously right now, we're telling people at least seven to 10 days. Yeah. So put it in there and then all the processing then, because also remember, we want to make sure these things are labeled properly and it gets to the lab. And then how often is the lab picking up, uh, Rose? Uh, at night. At night. So that's why we, we've... Uh, kept the timeline tight so that we get the testing and then the lab picks it up right after the, the session is done. I see it. Where is the lab again? So right now we, we work with Quest Diagnostics. They have a lot of uh, outlets, but they're the largest lab. I think you may have heard them in the news. Uh, Governor Baker has invited them to help out with this stuff. Uh, so they're doing all the testing. The government is giving them money to get all this taken care of. Uh, so the testing part, like I said, in the payments is covered, but the collection our providers, you know, the uh, uh, protective equipment on them, that's not covered at all by anything. And that's like we said, we don't even know if we're going to get paid for all this. So, right. so we're just doing is, it what we need to do. Everything is uncertain. Now, how do, you, uh, how do you contact the patient to let them know yes or no? So how do you contact? You give them a call? Go ahead. So when we get the results, then we'll call the patient to confirm the results yeah. after the doctor reviews the results. Yeah. Now, Quest, I understand, also has a portal that if they sign up for it, they can get the results. They can look for the results online themselves as well. Uh, I see. But uh, they can go on the Quest website and then figure that out. Quest has nothing to do with us. It's an independent, largest laboratory group in the country. So right. we don't have anything to do with them, uh, except they process these samples because we were told by the state that's what we need to send it. Uh, th this has been fascinating. J just see, Rose, just to see you getting ready to take this test. Uh, I think it's uh, very interesting for people to see uh, the painstaking effort that you have to take for each and every separate test. And I think this helps people appreciate the fact that, yeah, you're, you're short on supplies because you can only use everything you're, that Rose is wearing once. Yeah, so. And that's that an important thing. And that's why we want patient to be, uh, patients to be patient with the process. We're here to help out. Uh, all our providers are really doing the best they can, uh, and that's what we're here for. We're here to s uh, serve the community. Uh, me and Moshmi have set this up, and we have amazing providers over here that we're very proud of. They're courageous. They go out and do the right thing, and that's what we're going to continue to do. And anyone who can help us with uh, protective equipment, uh, that's helpful. Call in if you're worried about it. We have a telehealth system going, uh, and then go from there. Uh, excellent. One more time, if you can give us your phone number and your email address for anyone who can uh, give uh, anything to help you guys out. So Rose, what's the phone number? 781-648-4572. And our email is allintensteam at and our website is uh, com. Well, Dr. Jalisi and Rose and Mushmi, I really appreciate your time. Uh, best of luck because uh, you people are the ones who are the game changers in, in this crisis. So uh, I want you to be safe. I, I thank you for contacting us and it's been uh, most illuminating. I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. All thank right. You. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Take it easy. All right. You too. Bye -bye. Be safe. Be safe. Bye-bye now.